guys, my name's Russell. I'm the founder of presentation design agency, The Presenter. I've been a presentation designer and trainer now for over 15 years. I know a thing or two about PowerPoint and what makes a great looking presentation. And in this video, I want to show you my top three tips that will help you save so much time in your next PowerPoint build. Let's get going. Top three tips for helping you save time. And you will save a ton of time if you put all of these three tips into action. So the three tips that we're going to go through are over here on this side. I'm going to take you through using the selection pane. I'm going to talk about something called the quick access toolbar. And I'm going to show you how to quickly duplicate content using one key and one key alone. So let's get started. The selection pane, what is it? What does it do? What does it mean and how can it save you time? Well, to put it quite simply, the selection pane is your layering system. So if any of you have used uh, Adobe products such as Photoshop or Illustrator in the past, you'll be used to using a layering system PowerPoint has a layering system of its own, which is called the selection pane. And it's really useful on slides like this one I've got here because there are quite a few bits of content on this slide. And at the moment, if I wanted to edit some of these uh, circles, for instance, down here, next to this circle that says Houses of Parliament, I've just noticed there's a spelling mistake there. Parliament is actually spelt incorrectly. So if I want to update that and change it, it's really difficult to get to at the moment because this image is floating around on top of the circles. Now most people would probably drag that image down, then scroll back up, click on the circle, make the change, and then drag that image back up again. Obviously that's not ideal that's quite a long-winded way of making what should be a really, really simple change. So to access the selection pane, all you have to do is go at the very top here of your home ribbon. In the center, you'll find the Arrange key, the Arrange button, the Arrange drop-down, which has features in it such as Bring to Front, Send to Back, but right at the very bottom, there's an option called Selection Pane. And if you click on that, as I've just done, over here on the right-hand side now, you can see my layering system. And I can see all of those different objects that I've got on my slide. And as I click on them, you see they become highlighted on the slide. There's also a couple of icons next to each of these for me to switch them off or lock them. So if I don't want to see the picture of the Houses of Parliament and uh, London anymore, I can press the I icon to the right of the London pick, and that will just switch it off completely. I can then go over to Houses of Parliament, make that spelling change, which I'm hoping I'm spelling correctly. I'm pretty sure I am, although I'm a creative, so my spelling is terrible at the best of times. But then I can go back over here to my selection pane, switch that London pick back on, and there we go. I haven't had to move anything out of the way. I've just switched it off for a second, made the change, and then switched it back on. Now, the great thing that you can do here as well is you can lock items. So if you are sending PowerPoint files to other people for them to use, but you're a little bit worried about them breaking things, then you can actually lock them as well. Now, of course, they could figure out how to unlock them, but most of the time, they just won't even bother. So you can lock things in place by clicking the lock icon here, and that will take effect straight away. One thing that I'd highly recommend when you use the selection pane is that you do name everything um, so that it makes sense when you see the list of objects. I've only got a few objects here on the right in my selection pane, but when I see some of the presentations that our designers build for our clients, there can sometimes be 100 to 200 different elements. 
So it's really good to get in the habit of double clicking these items and actually just typing in a name that makes sense. Also really useful if you ever want to animate these uh, objects on this slide, if you give them a more meaningful name, that will come through to the animation section as well. So it'll be much, much easier for you to know if you're animating the right elements on your slides or not. So my number one tip to help you save time is to always make sure that you have the selection pane switched on. It will make it much, much easier for you to get to content, make edits and move things around much, much easier to do. My second tip, and this is probably my favorite one, is called the quick access toolbar. Now the quick access toolbar is a shortcut. It's your own personal menu that you can customize yourself. So as an example, let's say that we're getting a little bit annoyed going to the arrange button and clicking on the selection pane every single time we open PowerPoint. And because PowerPoint's been around for so long now, there are hundreds, probably even thousands of different buttons and features. And sometimes even getting to the simple ones can take quite a few clicks. And of course that all adds up and makes your PowerPoint build take much more time. But what we can do is with any features that we know we're going to use time and time again, is quite simply, we can right click on them and we can use this option here at the top that says add to quick access toolbar. So if I do that now, and you'll see then this extra menu has appeared magically at the bottom of my PowerPoint ribbon. Now this is my selection pane that I've added different buttons and features to over the last few weeks. So if I want my selection pane switched on or off, I don't have to go to this drop down anymore. I can just click it here. One button, selection pane on, selection pane off. If I want to add some shapes, which is something that I do quite often in my presentations, I don't have to go to the insert menu, then to shapes. I've got the shapes option here in my quick access toolbar. I click on shapes, I click on the drop down, I choose what shape I want and away I go. Okay, so think of some of the really, really simple features that you use all the time. Some of the things that everyone will use will be things like inserting text, inserting images, inserting videos, maybe some of the alignment tools, and it might be different depending on your job role, depending on the type of content that you present. If you're in finance, then you would want lots of the chart features and things like that in your quick access toolbar. So by all means, go to the insert menu, go and find those features, uh, maybe the chart feature, for instance, right click on that and add it to your quick access toolbar. There you can see it's now right next to me just up here. There's my charting option that I can use whenever I want. So this is a real shortcut. You can edit this quick access toolbar as often as you want, depending on what buttons and features you're using at the time, but it's a massive, massive time saver. And it just frees you up to just go to one place, click what you need and bang, it's there on your slide. So definitely take the time to put that in place. If you're enjoying this video, but realize you and your team still don't have the time it's gonna take to put this into action and build a great looking presentation, fear not. Me and my team of designers have been busy improving presentations for companies across the globe for over a decade. If you still need help after watching this video, do not hesitate to get in touch with us or with me directly. You can go to our website, thepresenter.com. You can email me, russell at thepresenter.com. We will be in touch with you as quickly as we can to explain our process, how we work, and get you and your team the finest looking presentation anyone has ever seen. So if you're enjoying the videos, but realize you still don't have what it takes in terms of time, we are here to help. Let's get back to that video. Now my third and final tip 
is another one that I use all the time, and that's duplicating content with the control key. So most of you will probably know that if you want to duplicate something or copy something, you can select it, you can then press control C to copy and control V to paste. And that works great, that's nice and quick. But there's an even quicker way that can give you even more consistency in your PowerPoint build. So let me show you an example of what I mean. Let's imagine that on this slide here, we want to build a, maybe this is a team page. I wanna have uh, six or maybe eight different team members on this page, but I want it to look really nice and consistent and everything aligned perfectly. So what I would do first of all, is I would get a picture of one of my first team members, as I've done here. I would insert a text box and I would group those together. Now I would move that over to the left hand side and if I just hold the control key down and then click and drag that object, you can see it's duplicating it for me. Now what I could do is take it a step further. If I hold the shift key to select both of those, now hold the control key, I can do the same again, but with multiple objects. And now I can use the same technique. I can hold shift down, select these, now hold control and drag those down. And there we go. So really, really quickly, we've got eight team members that we can really quickly go into and edit. I would probably spend a bit more time on the alignment and things like that, but you get the idea. So I can now click on here. I can click on the image. I can go to picture format and I can change the picture of that teammate. And obviously I can click into the text box and change the name. So if you're ever creating a slide where you know you're gonna have multiple uh, items of content, but you want them to all look really nice and consistent, the quickest way to do that is to create one as a placeholder, hold the control key and just drag that object. That will duplicate for you and then you can go and make the updates to that. So I hope you found this video, video useful. My top three tips again were the selection pane, the quick access toolbar, and duplicating content with the control key. If you found that useful and if it's saving you time straight away, please do me a big favor and like this video and hit that subscribe button so that you can be alerted when we release more and more tips and tricks like this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. I'll see you on the next video.